Welcome everybody, I'm Lizzie Brooks and I am here to take your mind off of the quarantine. I think the movement coupled with Josephine, Jojo, will be very helpful to help you accomplish that. So let's get right into it. Let's feel better. Let's get moving. Whew, so cooped up, right? Um, grab a blanket or a towel, or if your knees are fine without it, then grab nothing and come to all fours. And then from here, we're just gonna do some shoulder taps. So instead of hanging down here, draw your organs towards your spine, take one hand and tap alternate shoulders here. Just gonna make you stabilize a little bit through the trunk of the body. And then from here, if you wanna add a little more, we're going to come into a plank pose. So from here, either hold the plank or even hold a forearm plank or come to full plank and continue tapping alternate shoulders. Now, it's kind of easier if you kind of go side to side, but instead stabilize and just try to do a little less of that rocking side to side. There will be some if you're human. If you're a robot, maybe there won't be a rocking side to side. <laughs> you guys have been cooped up a while, so the jokes are not gonna get any better. And then lower your knees, try to avoid your puppy who loves blanket tassels. And then from here, go back to your all fours position and give a rotation. So rotate around in a circle. You can go as far forward. Some people like to really get that front body, front of the hips, and as far back as you want. And then reverse that rotation. You can even do this if the wrists are a little tender. You can even do this um, on your knuckles there or in between the first and second knuckle. London Bridge. Oh, she's got my wire. Cool. <laughs> no, girl. No, Jojo. Here you go. There. All right. And then once you've made a few circles, we'll tuck the toes under. Inhale and exhale. Press back into a really gentle, juicy downward dog where you are pedaling it out, opening your body slowly. Just feeling your hands on the earth, getting grounded. So I've been talking about in my videos, grounding down, remembering that when we start to hang out in the ether, everything starts swirling, we're overthinking, we're, we have all that mental chatter, we've gotta find the earth. And then from here, come on back down. Rise up into an all fours position here. And just roll the shoulders a few times. Just getting that blood flowing. Beautiful, bring the hands to the heart. Take a breath. And then shake it on out. And then we're gonna go ahead and take one set of toes to face the short edge of your mat. Reach the arms up. And then either put your hand on the waist towards the knee that's out to the side, or if you want a little more core and a little more strength, reach both arms out. So either here or here, getting that side body stretch and if your arms are reaching, a little bit more of that core work. And then come all the way up, bring the hands to the heart, shift your weight a little bit more over that lower knee and bring the leg that was extended back in. And then from here, we'll take it to the other side. External rotation of that hip, stepping towards the opposite short end of your mat. Breathe here, reach up. Exhale, either take your hand to the waist or reach it up. You're drawing in towards the midline there as if you're holding a beach ball in your hands and opening here. Good girl, good Jojo. And then inhale, come up, exhale. Let's bring the hands to the heart. Shift a little bit over that lower knee to get the other knee in. And then sit back in a hero pose of Virasana. Breathe here, palms down for grounding, for comfort, for some calm. 
Good. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, as the hands come to your heart, lift the hips over the knees. Good. Now inhale, reach the arms up. And exhale, I'll show you from the side. Tuck the toes under, bring the hands to the heart, and hover your hips over your heels. So I'm not going to take my torso way forward here. I'm going to take my torso up and my hips back. So that's going to really start to uh, work in the quads quite a lot. And then inhale, sweep hips up, arms up. Exhale, we'll go back to that quad-centric hold here. Breathing, hovering, again, not tipping the torso forward. Inhale, arms to the sides and up, hips up. And exhale, now hands to your heart. Inhale, exhale, shake that on out. Now, opening the arches of the feet, see if you can send your hips back. If you can't, lean forward or even come off a little bit. Just opening and stretching the feet. And then whatever way it works for you to come on up, you can do that. If you want a little bit more of a dynam dynamic movement coming up, you'll go into a squat. So I'm going to put my fingertips down, draw my inner thighs together, feet are going to come a little closer together, and I'm going to lift my knees. I'm going to move my hips back and then hover here and again put my hands down on the thighs. Instead of dropping my hips back and my knees up, I'm going to see if I can take my thighs more parallel to the floor. This is strengthening the ankles, working the feet, working the toes, and the balance. And good girl. And then from here, heels can either come down or they can stay lifted the whole time as you reach your arms to the sides and up. As you come all the way up, again, maybe to the tiptoes with heels lifted, maybe with heels down, reach up with the arms. Exhale. Bring your hands to your heart. Deep breath in here and shake it off. Good. This is a tricky situation <laughs> because she's doing so well here, but I need my mat. We're going to chance it. Take your puppy dog and move her to a location that's more suitable for her. And then put your blanket off to the side and come on up with me. Let's take a walk to the top of the mat. Bring your hands together to your heart. A little bit of um, half sun salutes followed by full, and you can make these exactly as needed for you. Inhale, reach the arms up, get long, root the feet. Exhale, bend the knees any amount and fold. You might be placing blocks under your hands. Fingertips could come to the floor, feet, whatever distance apart feels good. Maybe bending the knees here and then fixing your, your um, toe ring while you're down there. <laughs> Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold. Maybe bend the knees a lot. And then you can either roll up or reverse a swan dive all the way. Only look up if that feels good for you. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Let's move it to a full one. Inhale, reach up. Feel your breath. Exhale, arms can be to the sides or they can come through prayer pose all the way down or halfway down. Inhale, rise halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Now from here, take your non-dominant leg, so the leg that normally doesn't lead, and step that back <laughs> into a lunge. Wake up that back thigh, plug the femur head into the pelvis, draw the low belly gently up and in, and inhale, rise up to your high lunge. Turn your palms forward. It's okay, girl. Turn your palms forward, and then I'll do it one-armed. Inhale and exhale. Open your heart. Draw your chest up. Now, she thinks it's boring. It's not, though. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, open your heart, wake up that back leg, lift the sternum. And then one more time, reach. Exhale, draw the shoulder blades onto the back, little back bend here, working the legs, still in the breath. Inhale, reach. And exhale, come back down onto the mat. Step your legs back into plank or all fours. Here's where you can use vinyasa or not. If you're newer to vinyasa, there's lots of ways to do it. Heels rock forward. 
Chaturanga, most of us will come all the way to the floor. Tops of the feet will come to the floor. Shoulder blades move on to the back, just like you did in your lunge. And then you'll take a baby lift of the torso as the shoulders roll back. Inhale here, exhale, <laughs> come on down. Oh gosh, she's comfortable. And then from here, trying not to disturb your puppy, take a little slide and either shift back into, <laughs> yeah, that's what dogs do, shift back into a child's pose or move directly into your downward facing dog. Breathing there, good girl. And then from here, look to the top of your mat and you can step or walk or hop all the way back up. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold, choose how you wanna rise. I'm gonna roll up this time, round the spine, dangle the head and arms, and then come all the way up, shoulder blades, roll back. Good, all right, so let's do that on the other side with that lunge. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees. Step your dominant leg back. Find your lunge. Wake up the back leg. And then rise up. Turn your palms forward. Inhale, reach. Exhale, open your heart. Inhale, both arms will be doing it if you're doing it. Inhale, reach up. Now she's eating my microphone. Exhale, elbows draw back. Last one, inhale, reach. Exhale, draw back, lift the heart. Wake up the paraspinal muscles. Inhale here. Exhale, slowly come on down. Hands down, step back in either all fours, child's pose, or move through that vinyasa, heels forward. Chaturanga or all the way down, Cobra or upward dog, <laughs> exhale to downward dog. And then maybe there's a naughty dog right there. And five breaths here. Feel free to wiggle your hips side to side during this breath. Bend and straighten the legs, alternate the bends, whatever feels good. But really root down, kind of almost like you're, you put your hand in paint and you want to, <laughs> no girl, and you want to put a handprint down on your mat. And then we're gonna do something a little different. Walk your hands back to your feet. Take the fold at the back of your mat bend your knees and come up into a chair pose. So find it in the legs first and find safe feeling in the pelvis, not too far tilted forward or too far tilted back, stable, and then choose your arm position from there. Your arms might be forward, your hands might be at your heart, whatever works. Maybe one arm is up, one arm is down. Maybe you switch halfway through, breathe here. And then as you did before, you have the option to lift your heels. So bringing in that element of balance, working the inner thighs a little bit more, calves, ankles, all of that. And then as you float the arms down, straighten the legs and lower the heels, soften it out and shake out the legs and let's send the head around, opening through the neck. This is new. No, Jojo, sit. Good sit, girl. Good sit. Good, shake that all out. All right, now from here, take the feet together and we're gonna move into a different type of a balance. So choose the foot where you feel less stable on. So the one that you're not quite as good at as far as balancing goes. Soften that knee and lift the other knee up. Externally rotate and then place that foot either on the inner thigh or inner leg, maybe down here like a little kickstand for tree pose. Now what happens to a lot of us, and 
it happens to me too, is we kind of collapse into the hip and tree pose a little bit. So hug the foot to the leg and the leg to the foot. Then draw the pelvic floor into a little bit of a lift and maybe lift the arms. Breathing here. And if you wobble and waver or come out of it and fall out of it, just come on back. We'll be here. I fall out of things all the time. I've been teaching for 20 years. You're never immune to falling. <laughs> and then bring your hands to your heart. Rotate that knee forward. Place it down. And then just march it out a little bit. Shake it out. And we'll do directly right to the other side. So soften the knees. Root your foot. Lift the alternate knee. Externally rotate that hip. And then find your placement. And yeah, you can use your hand to help you find that place on the leg that works. And draw into the midline. Hands could stay at the hips, the heart, or lift up. If you are feeling really balanced today and you want to really challenge yourself and really take your mind somewhere else, gaze up. So taking the gaze up makes it harder to balance. It's a little easier to balance if you look down at the floor or forward, but don't put your gaze on a puppy, on a moving object. <laughs> Inhale, exhale, let's bring the hands to the heart, rotate the knee forward and place it down and march it out. And then we're gonna use the alternate lifting of the knees for an alternate elbow touch. So we're going to get a little bit more into the core and crossing that midline. So pick up that first knee, bend the opposite elbow, and see if you can come closer touch. Maybe they're just coming to here. Maybe that's it. So maybe the first few you're just kind of one elbow and then one knee, alternating sides. Maybe you start to get that connection to happen. It doesn't have to happen. And then notice too, are you bringing the knee more up to reach the elbow or the elbow more down to reach the knee? Are you bringing the torso forward in order to make that happen? These are all options. So you might just see what your tendency is and change it up. So if you have a tendency to lean forward, keep the chest a little more up maybe. If you were keeping the chest up, try that little lean forward. Maybe the arms start going back and then coming forward. Good, let's do one more each side. And good, shake that out. Widen the feet and send the hips around in a slow circle. Oh, we're gonna do some poopy. So this is a good place to pause and I will be right back. And we're back. Take your stance a little bit wider, turn one set of toes out, bend that knee, and let your arms soften. So let's soften some of that stress we have around our neck and jaw. And then let the arms float up, just like you're allowing them to float up to the surface of water. And then from here, turn the front palm up. Back hand can go to the waist or down the leg. Reach up, straight line, or any amount of an arc back, as long as that feels good for you, doesn't compromise the low back. And then flow your breath through this peaceful warrior shape, really alive in the feet. And slowly back to warrior two. Inhale, straighten the leg, turn the toes forward, exhale, hands to the heart. Lower the arms down, shake that out, and we'll switch straight, right over to the other side. Hi girl, good conduct, good. Soften the arms and then slowly let the arms float up. Place them on that surface of water with a little bit of energy. Gaze over the front fingertips here. And if you're ready, back hand comes to the waist or the back leg, turn the palm up, straight up or any amount of an arc back. So you're not collapsing so much here and just hanging out but finding structure in the legs, structure in the spine, opening through the chest. If looking up doesn't feel right, don't look up. And take it back to warrior two, straighten the front leg, turn the toes forward, and then heel toe in or bend the knees and hop in with soft knees. And then shake that out. <sighs> 
All right, so we're gonna use a little bit of that. We're gonna use a little bit of either stepping or hopping. You're gonna get the heart rate up, and I promise it will make you think more about what you're doing than anything else you've been thinking about today. So from here, soften the knees, and we'll start with just a walk. One arm out, same leg out, one leg out, other. Same goes in, and same goes in, keeping the knees soft. Then you step the other arm, other foot at the same time. Step, step, and step. So if hopping doesn't work for your sacrum, for your knees, for any reason at all, don't hop. Step, okay, or walk it out. If hopping is okay, we're gonna kick up that heart rate a little bit more, and bounding and hopping is really good to put stress on the bones and help remineralize and help um, prevent injuries in the bones. Hopping is really good. Also good for our lymphatic system, for our immune system, all right? So from here, bend the knees, bring your hands to the heart, and just do a little slight hop out. See how my knees landed bent, good? And I didn't go too wide. And then inhale, hop in, exhale. We'll inhale, hop out, exhale, hop in. Good, open, exhale in. Inhale out, exhale in. Three more, it's a lot, I know. It's like, it's like, remember when we did this as kids and it was no big deal? <laughs> yeah, well, now I'm 40, it's a bigger deal and you're whatever age you are and maybe it, I don't know, maybe it's super easy for you, but not for me. And come to the center, straighten it out and shake it out. Bring both hands, not over the microphone, but over your heart and just feel the changes you made in that less than a minute amount of cardiovascular hopping work. If you're ever feeling stuck or really tired, hop a little bit if you can, and it will take you into a new place, physically um, and usually emotionally, hopefully mentally too. Good, all right, loosen that out. Again, check in with the jaw, check in with the neck, make sure that feels all okay and then we'll come back to the top of the mat in fact i'm gonna go this way and check on girl yeah girl very good and then from here feet underneath hips wherever that's comfortable for you bring your hands to your heart step the right leg back so step it back about mm, two feet or so the back heel is lifted and you're still facing the short edge of your mat and then from here, you're just going to press the arms back and lift the back foot. Good. And then bend the front knee, land the back toes, bring your hands back to the heart. We're gonna do that again. It's a standing back bend, so you're not tilting forward like a warrior three, but rather press back, open your heart, scapula on the back, hamstrings, glutes, back body, firing, and exhale, bend the front knee, land down. Last one. Press back and lift. Now, if you want a little bit more, interlace your fingers behind you, roll your shoulders back. If you want more than that, you, I mean, excuse me, if that's too much, grab a strap instead of your hands. Breathe here, and then a little lift and lower of that back leg. Really working that back bend, whole posterior chain. And go ahead and release, hands to the heart. Half sun salutation, inhale, reach up, exhale to the fold, any amount, maybe halfway here. Inhale, rise up halfway, hands might be at the shins, exhale, down any amount, choose how you wanna rise, maybe through chair pose, inhale, come all the way up, and exhale, Anjali Mudra, hands at the heart. Soften that out, all right. Stepping the opposite, put the left foot back, that short distance, so not a full lunge, or not really a long lunge, I should say. Back heel is lifted. <clears throat> Hands start at the heart, and then we'll go into that little balance and that posterior chain lighting up. So press the hands back as you lift the back leg, spread those toes. Bend the front knee, land. Again, press back, lift the heart, open the chest and find the back toes down, hands to the heart. Last one with the hold and then that pressing. Press the arms back, hold, 
and now add your little lift and lower of the back leg. Really nice that we do core work, but our core isn't just our front body. We want to work the entire back body, the back of, uh, or not just the front here, but the back of the spine, glutes, pelvic floor, all of that. Good. And then from here, go ahead and shake it out because I can't remember if I had you do something else. <laughs> Inhale, reach up. Full sun salute. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, plant the hands, step the legs back again. You might want to lead with your non-dominant leg. Rock your heels forward, halfway or all the way to the floor. Cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, derive it from the core to downward facing dog. Breathing here, three to five breaths. If you need to come down to child's pose for part of this, come down to child's pose. So I'm going to demonstrate that. Sitting back and placing the head down. So really good to get close to the floor when we're feeling anxious or overwhelmed. And just breathing, maybe even focusing some of that breath to the back of the lungs. We have even more surface area of the lungs in the back. And then rising up to all fours. If you want your blanket, add your blanket here. If your wrists are a little tender, straighten the wrist and come to that area between the first and second set of knuckles. Inhale, extend your right leg behind you. So you're not collapsing here, but supporting. Inhale here, exhale, round in, forehead to knee. Inhale, reach. Exhale, round. Inhale, reach. Exhale, draw it in. Inhale, reach. All right, now listen closely. The knee that's down, that same hand is going to come down and we'll roll the top hip forward. So you're going to go into a rotation there. Lift maybe the ankle hip height, and you might have to kickstand that lower shin further behind you to help you balance. Or if you keep it more parallel to the top leg, then, then you can practically levitate in yoga. It's like you've reached mastery and you, should, you don't even have to do yoga again. Just kidding. <laughs> Inhale, reach the top arm over. Exhale, elbow to knee. In front this time, reach. Elbow to knee. This time it's the same elbow, same leg on that same side rather than crossing the midline. And then reach, arm up, and then slowly let's come back to where we started with the leg extended behind and then lower it down. So for me, because that really works the external rotators in the hips and the, uh, the glutes, I like to give it a stretch here. If you want to take a vinyasa or even hold a plank, anything that either delivers more challenge or takes the challenge down based on what you need, go for it. Make this your own. And then we'll go to the other side. So I'm going to switch here. <clears throat> Stabilize at the core. Left leg reaches out. Inhale is here. Exhale, round in. Inhale, take it out. Exhale, round it in. I'm not going to round as much because I think when I'm coming so close to my microphone, inhale, reach out. Exhale, draw in. It's, it's probably coming way too close <laughs> for the sound. And then we'll go ahead and reach it out. And here's where same hand as the knee that's down, same side, stays down. You might kickstand that lower shin behind you a little bit rotating that top hip, engaging at the ankle. So make a little L shape with that ankle. Breathe here and reach up. And your ankle can be here or here. Reach the top arm over the ear if that's okay. And exhale, let's take elbow to knee in front of us. Reach away. Let that connection happen again or maybe just closer, not connecting. And then reaching away. And drawing it in for that touch or come close and reach away. Very careful to reposition back 
and lower the knee down. This time I am going to go for the downward dog. And I'm going to invite you, as I'm doing, to swish the hips a little side to side and to widen your foot stance. So move one hip over to the side of the room and then drag your sitting bones gently back to the wall behind you. So you're moving hip over to stay the right and then tiny little bit rolling the sitting bones to the wall behind you to give you a really nice IT band stretch. Come back through center, shift, smush the hip over, and then almost imperceptible, there's just a little wag of lengthening in that left waistline to draw the sitting bones back a little more. Stay grounded in the hands. Come back through center. Turn the heels in, and we're going to walk back into Malasana, okay? So into a squatting pose. If you want to, use blocks to sit on here. If that's better for your body, then use blocks. Or you can even use one of your um, towels or blankets underneath your heels if your heels don't come down. Breathing. Inhale. And exhale. And then we're going to do um, a lion's breath here. So a lion's breath is not the prettiest thing that has ever happened in yoga. But what it is, is it's you stick your tongue out, you breathe out forcefully, and you look at your third eye point. So um, the eyes roll up and the tongue sticks out. So maybe don't put this as your dating <laughs> profile picture. All right. So it's stress reducing. So let's do it. Don't we need this? So inhale fully. And as you exhale, stick your tongue out and look at your brow at third eye point. Good. And then breathe normally. And what the heck? Let's do that again. I mean, we're in, we're in quarantine. Who's going to see? And even if you were in a class of 40 students, do it. Inhale. Good, and then just your natural breath through the nostrils if you can, if your allergies aren't too bad at this point. And then fingertips down, hips up, toes forward, sway a little side to side here at whatever height feels good. Again, a block under the hands or two blocks might be nice for your body. And then from here, bend the knees and either reverse swan dive or roll up or through chair pose, whatever you like. Roll the shoulders back and shake that out. <clears throat> and then we'll come to a mountain pose. Feet underneath you, whatever distance apart feels good for you. Hands to the heart. And just even though we're high up, can you still ground down? that sense that you are sending roots deeper than your mat, deeper than the floor, all the way into the soil of the earth. Tether yourself to the center of the earth. Know that you're grounded and supported. Inhale. And exhale, shake that out. And then come to your mat, however is comfortable for you, just into a seated position. I like to put a blanket sometimes underneath my hips for that. Good girl. Good. And just give yourself a moment to experience that seated position. We did a lot of standing work today. So my other anxiety, uh, yoga for anxiety video with more puppy shenanigans is um, closer to the ground. And this one was a little bit higher up. Good. And then from here, We'll go ahead and take a lateral. So put your, good girl, put your uh, left hand down, reach your right arm up, and take that over. You can rotate twisting here any amount. Good girl. And then reach up, and we'll go directly to the other side. Maybe finding a different movement through the spine, through the shoulders, through the back. Good. Inhale, come all the way up, both arms up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Shake that out. 
And then if you're on a pretty high fold on your mat, go ahead and unfurl that and allow yourself to lay on top of that if that feels good. If you wanna skip this part and not put the blanket down on your mat, you know that's what I'm gonna do. Today, I'm just feeling like, oh, I don't need that right now. That's gonna cause some trouble for trouble. And then from here, lay on down. Hug the knees in. Hi, girl. Draw the head up to the knees if that feels okay. And then come on back down. <laughs> and then straighten the legs. I love you too. And reach your arms behind you and your legs forward and get a full body stretch here. Reaching, wiggling it out getting longer than you thought you were. And then soles of the feet back down towards the floor and take your favorite twist. So some of you would like to keep the knees together and stacked here. Some of you like to keep the lower leg long, whatever it is, maybe there's a bolster or a blanket underneath that knee. And just breathe there. Just super calm like I am. Mm, maybe take the arms up to a cactus or a T. And come back through center and let's do that on the other side. Whichever twist you took to one side, take that to the other side. Whatever arm position feels good. And then come back through. Draw the knees in one more time. Open the knees, maybe move the hips, pelvis a little side to side. If you like happy baby pose or Supta Baddha Konasana variation, you can open here. <laughs> she just gave me like a wet willy. She put her tongue directly inside my ear. And then soles of the feet down, legs extend and set up for your final relaxation pose, Shavasana. Or you can come to meditation or legs up the wall, whatever works. Yeah. And slow your breath. Good girl. And let yourself release. Congratulations. You did that whole practice Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't think you're allowed to have that. What do you have? Oh, <laughs> she has the foam to my microphone. <laughs> I'll be ordering one of those apparently online. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. And like and subscribe if you got something out of this. Have a good day. Bye.